We got one more guest here for this Tuesday, Thursday edition, excuse me, of Bang the Book Radio. That is professional handicapper Tony George from Doc Sports. Tony, how's it going today, man? Going good, man. I'm busier than heck. Still trying to figure out my Super Bowl card. Well, the Super Bowl uh, rapidly approaching here, but not seeing yeah. a whole lot of movement out in the marketplace. Still two and a half, still 56 and a half. It's the same place we started early in the week. You surprised that we're not seeing too much movement yet, Tony? I am, especially with the amount of money that, that Vegas has got, you know, on, on uh, you know, uh, New England. I, I was down at Westgate yesterday. I, I've been running around town, you know, to different books, you know, even though I have their apps. I like to get the papers and, and go through all their props and sit down and, and – uh, go through them you know you try to middle some of them sometimes they're the over and under on yards and everything else is there so i'm doing that but i'm talking to a couple of sportsbook managers and they're you know 90 percent plus money on the patriots and they're not raising the line i think uh stations raised it up to three yesterday for about 20 minutes and dropped it back down to two and a half and william and hill had it at three for like a day and a half and I suppose they're getting money to come back the other way because the Sharps are going to hit the number at three. And uh, we have yet to – today's the day, you know, Adam, they all fly in from all over the country and start their Super Bowl weekend festivities. The whole town sold out. So you're going to see a ton of public money coming in here uh, the next couple of days. So it'll be interesting to see what the line does. I think they'll move it to three. You'll never see three and a half, obviously, no matter what the disparity is in money. But at the end of the day, as we all know, only 40% of the handle on the average in Vegas is, is the side. You know, the rest, their side or total, the rest of it's all props and, and first half and first quarter and second quarter bets. So I think really odds makers are, are more in tune to keep an eye on what the prop bets are doing because that's, that's where most of the money's at. And the money line stuff, some of that can really hurt them. And so that, that's what they're doing and fudging numbers with right now. So in terms of side total and money line here, Tony, we talked about it last week. We talked about some initial thoughts. We talked about you know, the early split, which has continued here. Has anything changed in your mindset, or you know, are you still uh, you know, pretty much honed in on what you were already looking at for the side and total? Yeah, I really haven't had my mind changed. I've sat down and talked to some you know, we're all, there's, you know the, the, the legitimate sports handicapping community in Las Vegas is a small circle. You know, there's a lot of guys out here that, you know, got a website or whatever. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, I've spoken to all these guys are my friends, even if they're competing websites. We've known each other. For, I've been doing this 27 years. So I know about everybody in town. I know everybody in town. And uh, it's really interesting to, when usually, you know, guys, especially a lot of these handicappers, including myself sometimes, can have a little bit of an ego. You know, and they take a really strong stance on their belief on what they're going to do. And I have not spoken to one single handicapper, and I won't name them by names, but all your listeners would know know who they were. And every single one of them that I've spoken to is still undecided, side and total, which I've never seen in 27 years uh, doing, you know, somebody I've been there, the Patriots are going to kill them. Here's why they're going to kill them. You know, the, you know, the Eagles are going to get beat by 30. You know, like last year, you know, and there were guys making stands, you know, all over the place. Atlanta's going to steamroll these guys that can't stop them. Brady can't trade punches. You know, all those different, you know, conversations you have with these guys or, you know, where they're just like, this thing's going to fly over the total. You know, blah, 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 second half scoring. It's automatic, you know, all this stuff. And this year is pretty much silence. It's nothing. You know, it's either, again, if you take a look at at the at, – just basically breaking down, um, you know, grading positions, uh, man-to-man matchups outside of the quarterback position, you know, almost everything points to the Rams, especially on the defensive side of the ball. You know, uh, Wade Fellow, you talk about inexperience in coaching. Wade Fellows has coached against New England in the Super Bowl. You know I mean? So it's not like McVay's just some rookie. You know, and I was looking, so you're either going to bet on experience or you're going to bet on the better team and what are you going to do and the numbers sitting about where it should be. And, 
it's just it's a real tough call. I mean, I'm I'm going to make a lot more money for myself and my clients on props than I could even think about making on the site in total. Um, I've got maybe a little bit more of a strong lean with the first half total as a premium play that I'm I'm going to that that's going to probably be my biggest play. Uh, uh, Adam is is the first half total. All right, so let's talk about those props then. I mean, again, there, there are just so many of them and so many options, and, and you can correlate them to how you expect the game to go. You can correlate them to hedge against your side or total play. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of different things here with these. What are some of the props that you're looking at, Tony? Well, um, a ton of them here, obviously. I don't think there's going to be a lot of sacks. Uh, in the game, you know, I think both, even though the defensive line of, of uh, the Rams, as you saw what they did against to Drew Brees and a lot of hurries, but I still like that under three and a half sacks a lot. I don't think there's going to be too many of those. I think there'll be a lot of hurries. Brady gets rid of the ball too quick, you know, and golf doesn't hang on to it either, you know. Um, and, and then, of course, um, looking at some of these uh, – I saw a prop bet today I was going to looking at over five and a half first downs, third down conversions for uh, New England. Over five and a half was plus 100, and I put a little bit of money on that yesterday. These aren't necessarily um, these aren't necessarily uh, props I'm putting out to my clients. Um, will there be a field goal in the first quarter? Yes, minus 130. Um, I like that a lot. Um you know, New England's only scored in the first quarter one time in the Super Bowl, and it was field goals. They've never scored a touchdown in the first quarter. And you got two really good kickers here, you know, uh, Adam, uh, in a dome, no wind, no weather. Um, I think the I saw Stations has got 46-and-a-half. I think Westgate's got 48-and-a-half on longest field goal in the game, and I would go over that uh, as well, you know. Um I think you're going to see uh, easily have somebody stall out on the 35, 38 yard line and want to kick a field goal in that environment. They both got good legs, you know. Um, so that being said, on the side in total to, to uh, sweeten up the pot a little bit, instead of worrying about the two and a half, this is probably going to end up at three, no more. But two and a half. The, my problem is I can't wait till Sunday. For my clients, we have to put out all of our cards for football Thursday at 5 Central. So this card's got to go up today, which is my props are complete, just not my side and totals other than the first half. But some of the alternate uh, point spreads, which I really like and I'm willing to do here, um, was um, I got – let's see what I – oh, here it is. I, I've, I even got this ticket. Uh, I, over at Stations Casino, I took the Rams plus 6.5 at minus 180. So you can manipulate the line. At Rams plus four and a half is minus 150. Plus six and a half now is at 200. I'm looking at live odds. And if you want to go up to three and a half, you know, um, or you want to go up to seven and a half, it's minus 250 taking the points. Um, so those are just a few of them. You know, I've got more if you want to talk about more, some player props if you want to. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, th- those are the ones I – for your guys here. And one, you know, everybody says everybody does one exotic or fun wager. I do it every year. I put 200 bucks on it every year. About three, four years ago, it panned out for me. I always bet the safety. And it's plus 650. And uh, I put 200 bucks on that at 650 at stations yesterday, Adam. So I'm hoping I'm hoping for a safety for a big play. I, I got the one when they sacked uh, Peyton Manning in the end zone. And walked away with like sixty three hundred dollars on that on that one prop bet, and that happened real early in that Super Bowl game there too. So it made me real happy. So I'm pulling for safety here. Well, I certainly don't want you to pull back the curtain on everything that you've got going out to premium clients. But you know, I'll ask you the same questions I asked Brad Powers in the previous segment. You know, as we look at this game, and, and as we look at all of the skill position talent on both teams, I mean, you kind of have to put yourself in the mind of the coach, of the offensive coordinator of the quarterback, is there a guy for New England or the Rams that you feel like, you know, will be kind of the spotlight guy in this game? I think maybe Sony Michelle will be for New England. And I just got a feeling, just a gut feeling here that Gurley may have played possum, you know, 
um, last uh, against against uh, New Orleans. He wasn't a hundred percent. Uh, whatever the game plan was in Sean McVay's mind there, but I think Gurley's going to have a big day uh, for, um, and you might want to start looking at some of his uh, some of his numbers, you know, this week because I think that they've been there's a little bit of value there because they really didn't know whether he was going to play, you know, that much or not. And Sean McVay's comments were um, he would not commit to saying he's going to get more touches, this, that, and the other, but they're getting equal reps in practice. I know that for a fact. But he said it was going to be an in-game decision on how he was going to be distributing the ball between him and Anderson based on, you know, performance on the field, uh, which leads me to believe that Gurley's healthier than he was against New England for whatever reason that was. I think, you know, they may have a big day. You know, they're a big play action team. LA is and play action. They'll even they'll get two backs in the backfield on a split set, you know, keep one back for blocking and run and you know run Gurley out on wheel routes a lot and get him out in space. And and uh, New England's not real good at covering that, so I can see Gurley having a big day here. That's the thing. I mean, you know, you think about everyone's looking at this game as Tom Brady versus Jared Goff and, and Bill Belichick versus Sean McVay and the experience edges there. And yet, a lot of times in these segments, we keep coming back to the running backs. So, it just yeah. speaks to the intrigue of the Super Bowl. And, you know, that, that there, are just, there are so many ways that both of these teams can go about it. And we've talked for over a week and a half now about one 60-minute football game. And we've covered every angle we possibly can. And yet, there's still that level of uncertainty with how it'll play out. Yeah, you know, and, and the big, again, you know, this is pros versus Joes. Everybody and their dogs going to be betting New England. And you know what? Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have beaten lesser teams in this spot in big games time and time again. You know, they just, it, 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 just like the first half of the Kansas City game. It, you know, as I look at New England, I try and make a case for the Rams. You know, you look at the Kansas City game. The first half, Andy Reid got his ass coached off. There was there was no there was no doubt about it. You know, he got his ass coached off, and then they made some adjustments at halftime, which Andy Reid didn't used to do. And he made some great adjustments, and then you got to bear in mind that um, they that the Patriots gave up 31 second half points in a championship game. I mean, that's that's alarming. The Patriots are road chalk. This year, Rochalk 0 and 5, you know, against the spread is Rochalk. I mean, that that's got to alarm you. Um, another thing that has to alarm you, you hear a lot about this experience factor. And I was looking up a stat here, and I'm going to see if I can pull this up on my web on my website here because I saw a stat here. You talk about experience when it comes to coaching. I was reading an article here, and it's and I did some double checking on it. The team with the most experienced coach in the last 19 games has gone 8-11 and 11 straight up and, uh, and then a miserable 4-13-2 um, and two against the spread, you know, including last year, you know. I mean, so, you know, the, the experience factor is, is what you think it is. It's not Tom Brady versus Jared Goff. Tom Brady versus Jared Goff in a skills challenge or something like that, maybe he might beat him, but at the end of the day here – you know, it's going to boil down to uh, um, some coaching. And, and the reason I brought up the Kansas City game and Andy Reid getting his rear end coached off, Sean McVay is not going to get his rear end coached off. The other thing, too, is, I guess, as you're talking about the side play, this is not Kansas City's defense. Um, this is night and day from what they faced in the AFC Championship game on the defensive side of the ball. And um, Wade Phillips is a very experienced coordinator, as we all know, past head coach, the whole nine yards, you know. And I think Brady and Belichick, as much as they'll, like they did in Kansas City, devise a way to create man-to-man mismatches and bad matchups for the other team. Teams are like Kansas City adjusted in the second half. And I think if Kansas City would have won, 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 won the coin toss in that game because New England couldn't stop them, We'd be talking about Patrick Mahomes and, you know, Tyreek Hill right now instead of Brady and Edelman. But at the end of the day here, um, I think that the Rams have a very good chance to win this game. I really do. But it's just you always got to hesitate on that Brady and Belichick factor. And that's really what gives me great pause, which I'm finding, you know, 
personnel grading matchups in the prop bets you know, far more lucrative than the side or the total here. All right, so we transition to a much different market here. That's college basketball. We'll touch on the Missouri Valley. We've been doing our conference breakdowns here, and the last time we talked about the Mo Valley, Tony, Valparaiso was leading this thing at 4-0. and Well, they've dropped four of their last five. Loyola Chicago now in the top spot, and that's probably where they should be. So the balance of power has shifted a little bit here in this conference. Uh, yeah, it has. And this is, this is, there's a lot of ebb and flow last night, um, a lot of ebb and flow in this conference. You know, you had, uh, you know, the home teams aren't dominating. Evansville goes down to Bradley last night. Um, uh, Drake, I, my only loss, I've been on a hell of a run in college. I think I, 11 and four run in college basketball my last 15 and and um you know mo valley's why i always stick a mo valley play in my only loss if i took drake who just got their rear end handed to him you know by a bad road team in illinois state last night by 14 points laying four which was just shocking you know in southern illinois who was kind of fallen by the wayside and couldn't get anything going offensively here they go and stick up 88 points last night on, on uh, Indiana State. And, you know, um, it, it, it's been a uh, – I tell you, it has been a topsy-turvy uh, a, a conference this year with no clear-cut favorite as of yet, which is a little bit concerning and a lot uh, – real hard for me to handicap right now. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, you know, we have talked about that home road dichotomy here, and, and that doesn't really seem to be working as well as it has in the past, as no. you mentioned, and, you know, sort of illustrated by what happened uh, last night, you know, and, and yeah, it's just a small sample size, but still, it's kind of been the running theme here. So, well, I mean, how, how do you sort this thing out? You've got Loyola Chicago at the top, Illinois State at six and three, three teams at five and four, two teams at four and five. Nobody in the conference has fewer than three conference wins. And is it Loyola Chicago and then everybody else in your mind right now? Well, uh, I I still think Drake, if they can get their act together, is going to give them um, going to go ahead and give them some problems, you know, at the end of the day. But um, Loyola Chicago leads the conference in offensive efficiency by a mile, you know, um, and uh, they're kind of middle of the pack when it comes to defense, but they're you know, Missouri State, Drake, Illinois State defensively are good. You know, I thought maybe Valpo was going to be that team this year to break out of there, you know. But, uh, you know, you've got um, this uh, this Crutwig and uh, Towns uh, for Loyola. Uh, both those guys are rock star studs. Illinois State, you know, I think still going to be a sleeper. They got Yarborough. They got Fane, which is – Bill Fane is a really good player. Um um, so I think it's going to be Loyola Chicago, and I think maybe Illinois. I think maybe Illinois State's going to be, be a team that 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 comes on here a little bit as the season goes along. That's one team I've got my eye on if I'm I'm catching points, and I faded them last night like an idiot, just because Drake has you know just been they were they were you know um, Drake's one of the best cover teams in college basketball, and uh, they were 15 three and one it gets spread going in that game last night. You know, but they lost Nick Norton, you know, about two weeks, two and a half, three weeks ago. And I thought, well, we'll see how they react. And they reacted very badly um, the last couple of games of the non-conference schedule into the conference schedule. Uh, they did not play well, and they found out a way to develop some chemistry and get some scoring back. But then again, here we are last night. They had trouble uh, scoring against Illinois State and that defense. So I'm going to kind of have to take Drake out of the mix but. I think right now Illinois State's probably going to be the odds-on favorite team to challenge as the season goes along uh, right now with Loyola. And Loyola, Chicago, and Illinois State play here on Saturday. And as I'm looking at Mark Corvick's look-ahead lines here for the rest of conference play for Loyola, Chicago, they're a favorite of four or fewer points in six of their remaining nine conference games. So this does look like a conference that should be very competitive down the stretch. Uh, Any. Any look-ahead thoughts to that game here on Saturday between Loyola Chicago and Illinois State? Was was that just a look-ahead spot last night for the Ramblers where they almost lost at home to Northern Iowa? Now, Northern Iowa just gives everybody fits because they're so good defensively. Uh, that's one thing, you know, um, 
and you start you start looking at their uh, you know uh, defensive efficiency and and different things, and you go, well, you know, they're not ranked up that high. They're just real pesky, you know. And you never know what you're going to get with with Northern Northern you know, Northern Iowa. You never know what you're going to get with them. Uh, one night they show up and look like a world beater, and the next night they show up and look like the Northern Iowa of old. If, if we score. 51 points, we can win because we can hold somebody to under 50 all the time. That's that's kind of their MO the last couple of years. It's not the case this year. They can put points up. Um, that game, Loyola, that's yeah, that's in that's in Chicago, isn't it? Yeah, game's at Illinois my, my, State. That one's at yeah, Illinois I, State. I went down, it's at Illinois State. I I would only take the home dog in that one. That would be my initial reaction. I would only take the home dog, and I wasn't impressed with what Loyola did last night uh, at all, to be totally honest with you. Um, they they probably should have won a lot, by a lot more points. They probably should have won, you know, more than what they were. I think it was a one-point game, if I'm not mistaken. So, was it 61-60 or something like that? Um, I, I was so I, I was so absolutely uh, dialed in to – uh, my Drake loss that I really didn't pay that much attention till this morning. I, I was like kind of raised my eyebrows on that because I thought they'd beat them up a little bit and they just they didn't get it done. But um, you know, playing a tight game like that, then going on Illinois State's real, real tough to beat. You know, um, it, 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 most of these teams until this year, that, that that was the one thing I always relied on. You know, Adam was. I got a team at home catching points in the Mo Valley. Automatic take. Odds makers are clueless, and I was just pounding these plays and winning. You know, sixty-five, seventy percent of them. Just almost. It was automatic. It was like clubbing baby seals. And this year now, you never know what you're going to get. You know, um, the fade team right now is Evansville. They're not playing well at all. Obviously, getting beat up by Bradley at home is is alarming. But you know. Uh, Maybe Loyola Chicago was looking ahead a little bit against Northern Iowa uh, because I know one thing. I remember seeing a halftime. I think they were down five or six at halftime. If I'm not, I think they were down like six, maybe maybe more than six or seven, something like that. Um, yeah, they were down 33-26, so they were down seven points at halftime to Northern Iowa, which was really was which was was really uh, an eyebrow raiser to me, you know. But you know, the thing of it is is the one thing I looked at this morning, although Loyola won that game by one point, Adam, look look at these percentages from that game. They shot 50% from the floor and 50% from the three-point line. And uh, they out-rebounded them by seven rebounds, and they still only won by one. That is a little bit disconcerting. And I'm sure I didn't watch the game – but I see that Northern Iowa only got four free throws in the entire game, and and, Lo- and Chicago Loyola got uh, 19, and they only shot 57 percent from the floor. Those type of numbers, only winning by one, kind of kind of got to raise your eyebrows a little bit. They're going to be laying a decent number on the road this weekend. Tony George, professional handicapper over at Doc Sports. What's going on over there right now, Tony? Well, we got our Super Bowl card over there. Every handicapper at Doc Sports, we've got 12 of them, including moi. Um, we're running a special uh, $25 for anybody's Super Bowl card. And all these Super Bowl cards have side total and a bunch of prop bets on them. So it's a good way to shop around and get two or three guys and and uh, pick up a ton of prop bets and, and spread it around. So my card will be out of 5 Central today. We're on a nice 11-4 and four run. In college basketball, I got a big, big uh, hidden gem small conference play tonight, uh, a six-unit play on a doubleheader. And my NBA has been on a nice 20-9 and nine run. And, and one thing I found out, Adam, I know you didn't have this on your list, and, but the one thing I've, I've discovered, and I have just been absolutely killing it, I have been betting first half lines in the NBA. I'm on a 20-9 and nine run, but I've been betting these first half lines in the NBA here about the last month and a half, I've had one first half line loss in the NBA this entire season, and I've been cherry picking them like crazy. So um, you always got to worry about complacency with big leads with good teams against weak sisters in the second half, and how many times you lay in nine, they're up twenty at halftime, they win by eight, and you lose by a point. 
I've taken the guesswork out of it, and I'm finding great spots in the NBA with these first half lines, Adams. I'm just I'm tearing it up. So we'll have uh, one of those plays tonight on Thursday. Yeah, we'll talk about your first half betting strategy next week. I want to make sure we had our focus on the Super Bowl here this week. We'll talk first sure. half NBA and, and some of the things that you look for on that segment next week with Tony George, professional handicapper over at Doc Sports at T George Sports on Twitter. Tony, appreciate your time as always, man. Thank you so much. Good luck with the Super Bowl. We'll talk to you again next week. Well, yeah, I'm a little disappointed you didn't tell me which way you were leaning on the side, Adam. <laughs> I'm saving that for tomorrow's show. Saving it for oh, tomorrow. Okay, I'll, I'll be sure and tune in, buddy. <laughs>